All right, welcome everyone to today's webinar. My name is Alex Acri. I'm going to be your host today along with Brandon Reich from Gusto. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So my name is Alex and I am the Customer Success Director for Applos Software. Some of you may be familiar with who we are and what we do, but as kind of a high-level overview of what we do is provide uh, not only fund accounting and donor management, but basically all kind of back office type software that any church or nonprofit would need. Kind of the goal of Applos is to be kind of the one-stop shop for software for churches and nonprofits. So we've been around for about 10 years now, uh, started with the fund accounting and then grew to do some donor management, website building, and uh, lots and lots of other features. Uh, one of those features that we always wanted to do and just never had the expertise or the capacity <laughs> to, to figure out was payroll. So for years, we uh, we went on a search and, uh, you know, tried a couple of different partnerships and just never really found a good thing until we found Gusto. So today, what we're going to be doing is going through uh, how we now are partners with Gusto and how our systems talk to each other and how you can use both to accomplish your payroll and fund accounting needs for your church or a nonprofit. So that is that. Let me go ahead and... Uh, I'm losing my control here. Here we go. So today, uh, we're going to talk about using Gusto and Applos together for simpler payroll. Again, my name is Alex Acri. I'm on the Applos side, and then Brandon here is on the Gusto side. Say hi, Brandon. Hey, everyone. Thanks for that great introdu introduction, Alex. Um, I'm really excited to uh, talk with you all today. And, uh, you know, we we love working with Applos and, and serving um, the nonprofit and religious organization space. Um, it's, it's something uh, we're really passionate about here and, and together working with the best in class um, product with Applos is, is a, a real thrill. Great. Yeah, so today what we're going to be doing here is we are going to look at a couple different things. One is we're going to look at an overview of Gusto's payroll features and pricing. Then we're going to walk through how to get you started in Gusto and the benefits for Applos customers and then see how to use that payroll platform to do common tasks as well as import that into Applos so that it keeps everything consistent between both the accounting system and the payroll system. And then at the end, we'll do some open question and answer time. So between now and the end, that question field in your GoToWebinar control panel is where you can type in anything that you're thinking of. Um, first and foremost, this webinar is being recorded. So if you missed part, a part of it, or if the sound cuts out or whatever, uh, this will be recorded. So we'll send that to you uh, after we're done. And then uh, any other questions between now and then, just submit those, and then we will do some Q&A time on the back end. So uh, first, I'm going to hand it over to Brandon, who's going to cover those three first points there. And then I will jump in with the Apple side after that. So let me hand over the presentership to Brandon here. Awesome. Go. OK, you should see that coming your way. <sighs> Awesome, and I hope everyone can see my screen. Um, Alex, let me know if that's coming through uh, crystal clear. Yep, looking good. So uh, today what I'm going to do uh, is walk through a little bit of information about the Gusto platform, um, weaving in how we work with the Applos platform, and then um, I'll save some time to kind of give a quick walkthrough to show how easy to use uh, our platform is. So, you know, just to start, who are we? Um, Gusto has been around for... Um, seven, seven years now, going on eight. Um, we work with over 100,000 organizations. Um, you know, thousands of nonprofits and religious organizations make up the, that 100,000 as part of that. Um, we are specifically built for uh, businesses with one to 100 employees. And we really are focused on serving the payroll needs of organizations uh, like yourselves. You know, we, we really strive to um, turn payroll into less of an administrative task and something where uh, it helps build work to be a, a place that empowers a better life. Um, you know, we want to make payroll the least the least concern of, you know, your day to day administrative tasks, you know, employees happy and thrilled with their payroll. Um, it should be a, a great experience, not one of, you know, dread or, or, or annoyance. So we call ourselves the people platform. Uh, and we call ourselves that because we are not just payroll. There are, um, you know, the option to add benefits on. We have integrated HR, um, and all of this comes together in a really, really easy to use uh, platform. 
and couple that with our customer service, we have, uh, I believe 600 is now the number, um, sales and support folks based in Denver that are there to help our customers and our prospects get, get set up and answer any questions they might have, whether that's how to set up housing allowances or um, getting W-2s at the end of the year, we, we can ha help with all of that. This is a nice uh, kind of wide swath of, of customers that we work with. We like to call our customers our customers. So, you know, looking at full service payroll, what does that mean? Um, you know, payroll should be the least of your concerns when you are um, operating your organization. Um, there are taxes that are that your businesses are exempt from. There's other taxes that have to be paid. Um, and that shouldn't be a concern for you. So we built a platform that automatically handles all of it. Um, any um, relevant federal, state, and local payroll taxes, we actually calculate and emit payment automatically for on behalf of your business. Um, for your W-2 employees, we provide them W-2s at the end of the year. And for your contractors, we provide 1099s at the end of the year. Um, we handle the remittance of all federal, state, and local filings that are relevant to your business. We offer direct deposit and the ability to print checks directly on site. And for some of your organizations where people operate in multiple roles, we actually can handle different pay rates, pay schedules, and pay types. Um, and we have no contracts and no hidden fees. And that's not just a marketing gimmick. Um, we really built a platform that has organizations such as yourself in mind. Um, there's no kind of bait and switch. There's no, oh, you know, that's an extra, this is an extra. Um, I'll get to the pricing a little later, but it, we really mean it when we say, you know, you'll always know the pricing that you're, you're going to have. When we talk about HR, um, HR can be somewhat of a scary concept. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of people think of sexual harassment training, um, you know, dealing with employee incidents. But at the end of the day, uh, HR is providing a great experience for employees. Uh, you know, when they're coming on, when they have, have, are trying to take vacation, um, get paid, all of that. Um, and HR also is making your lives easier as administrators. Um, so employee self-onboarding. Um, we actually offer a feature that I'll, I'll, I'll show uh, in the demo where instead of having to sit there and manually enter data, um, one person as, as you come onto the platform, um, we actually offer something that allows the employee to fill out their information. Of course, um, the person who is administering the payroll will be putting in the um, compensation and job title and all that, but the employee, before they get get to their first day can actually enter their bank account, their social security, their, their tax withholdings, all of that stuff very easily. And lifetime employee accounts, um, you know, let's say goodbye to the giant file cabinet holding everyone's pay stubs. Uh, employees will have uh, their Gusto account uh, for the lifetime. Um, I was an employee at a company that used Gusto five years ago and I still have my Gusto account then. I can access it to see my W-2s, my pay stubs, anything. Uh, so it's really helpful. And then benefits, if you are um, currently offering or thinking about offering benefits, uh, whether it be health insurance or uh, vision, dental, anything like that, um, we can work with you to offer your uh, employees that. And the great thing is, you know, it doesn't matter how small, um, we, can, we can help with that. And it's all integrated into the platform and we don't charge a fee on top of that. Oh, looks like I'm... And how we work with um, organizations um, like religious organizations and nonprofits, um, you know, we, we are built for multiple types of businesses, but for uh, a religious organization, there's, there's two really big things, exemptions. Um, exemptions are super easy to set up. Um, I'll walk through that in the demo. And then W-2 reporting. Um, we support the reporting of housing allowances, so moving um, that reimburse that recurring reimbursement amount into uh, box 14 on the W-2, and all of that will actually um, be be helped along by our awesome support team. Um, at the end of the year, um, our customers will call in and say, you know, this was um, a housing allowance. Please move it, and that's it. The W-2 will be uh, correct when it is delivered to the employee at the end of the year. And for nonprofits, when setting up. Um, it's as easy as selecting that you are a, 
501c3 entity type, and we automatically apply the state, the, the federal and state exemptions. We do support uh, 403b plans um, and tracked. We don't offer them ourselves, but they can be tracked and money can be pulled out that way. So I'm gonna hop over to the live demo. Um, and if there are any questions throughout, please uh, feel free to pop into the questions um, if you wanna see something uh, deeper. Um, quickly, uh, going into the setup phase, um, you know, every, every, every organization is gonna have folks with different um, needs, exemptions, that kind of thing. Um, and we have an employee, he, employee here, Hannah. Um, maybe she is, has an exemption. Um, you can do that right here. And it's as easy as clicking off what they are exempt from. And just like that, all future payrolls will be able to be exempt from those, from those along with uh, working with our support team. Can, if you've already run a payroll, that can be uh, corrected in the wages uh, from, previous, from previous payroll runs. For recurring reimbursements, if you have anyone with a housing allowance, it's as easy as putting this in. And now each payroll, they will receive that housing allowance paycheck. Now the actual running of payroll, this is, this is one of the best things. Um, running payroll is so easy to do. Um, it's, it's simple, it's straightforward, and the great news, and I know Alex will dive even deeper into this is it connects directly into uh, Aplos for journal entries. So all of your payroll expenses are imported straight into Aplos. So no matter if you have employees that are hourly or salaried, we can handle one, the other, or even a mix of both. And it's all really easy, calculated based off of their hours, based on their uh, employment type, and the compensation that uh, you would enter and set up. And there are uh, a ton of options for overtime, double overtime, bonus, commission. If you have any businesses that are tip-based, um, that can be entered here too. And as a payroll administrator, I would go here, um, make sure everything looks right. Once everything looks good, um, I do have the option to switch to check and we'll see what that looks like. Once this all looks good, we'll hit save and continue. Going to the time off, this will actually review um, any PTO or sick time taken during that pay period. And then finally, the payroll preview page. And this is a really powerful tool um, for cash flow purposes. Um, you'll be able to actually see, that's a uh, Penny the Pig. Uh, everyone loves Penny the Pig. and. Um, you'll be able to see a, a complete breakdown of where, what, what's being debited on what date, um, you know, where are the taxes going that are applicable, um, and what is Gusto actually um, taking out of your bank account. <clears throat> so we break down our um, deposits uh, four different ways, uh, direct deposits, reimbursements, garnishments, and taxes. Uh, the taxes we will pull out and actually remit to the local, state, and federal tax authorities. Uh, so that's a huge burden off your shoulders. Any payroll-related taxes that are relevant to your business will be handled for you. Um, we will get them to the government and do all the reporting on that. And once this all looks good, you'll hit Submit Payroll. The payroll has been run. So what we see here now is a awesome um, check that you're able to actually print on site from any printer directly uh, at your location and print it right out on check stock which you can buy at you know a, an office depot or staples and that's it and payroll's been run and it's that it's kind of that easy um, with any contractors that you might might have um, payments are are two clicks you know let's say Louis here is owed $500 for his services. We hit save and continue, and we submit payment. Just like that, Louis will now receive this payment and will receive his 1099 at the end of the year. Looking at um, time off, um, we do offer time off requests similar to this uh, during with some of our um, higher packages. 
Um, with our base level package, you can just record employee time off, uh, but even that will allow you to actually put in what And that will actually populate up here on this calendar. So you'll always have a good idea of where, where everyone is in and, and when, when people are going to be out of the office and everything like that. Just flipping back, I want to make sure um, I show some of the pricing. This doesn't seem, sorry, give me one second. There we go. So we have um, three packages, uh, and the way you can think about it is, you know, payroll uh, light on the left, all the way up to HR heavy on the right. Um, with with Aplos, you're always going to receive your first three months free with Gusto, and that's that's not three months of just having an account. That's actually three months of um, three months of running payroll, um, and we charge a monthly base plus a per employee fee. Um, during your free three month trial, you can try any of these packages. Um, and as you go up, it kind of adds on more and more HR features. So if you're just looking to run payroll and export it out to your journal in Aplos, that can be right over here on the left side. Yeah. And Alex, I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to you now. Um, and save save some uh, more of the demo for any any questions at the end. Sounds good. Yeah, there are a couple of questions. Um, as long as we're kind of in the gusto oh, cool. area, yeah. if you don't mind. Um, first one is here from Yvonne. If if the majority of your employees have direct deposit and you have one employee that wants a paper check, how would you handle the paper check? Great question. Um, that paper check can be printed out directly on site. Um, so the PDF that I pulled up of that check printing. You would go to an Office Depot or Staples. We could advise you on what kind of check stock you would need. It's essentially just a thicker paper with a tear off. Um, and there's no, there's no extra charge for doing checks versus direct deposit. So you would just, you know, buy a small amount of that print about of that check stock paper and print it on site. Cool. Uh, second question, similar, uh, also related to print excuse me, check printing is from Paul. Is the check printing customizable? We already have check templates. There are aspects that are customizable. I don't know the full extent. Let me uh, check in on that. And uh, Paul, I will uh, take down your information and, and reach out with that answer. All right. Uh, from Dave, when do you take money and pay quarterlies? Yeah, so for, um, for actually taking the money out the account when you run payroll it will tell you what day depending on what time of day you're running payroll um it could it will take it out that day or the next day um for paying quarterlies we pay them um as the date approaches so let's say um we're looking at march 30th is the day that q1 is due um, we will get the paperwork and payments in as early as the beginning of march um, there is a section that i'll show now in in the gusto platform that actually shows the agency payments this demo account i hope has them so um there's no activity on these but this is where you would see what data was actually submitted when it when it went in and we will always make sure that those are paid on time so you do not incur any any late fees yeah follow up so so you are taking the money to pay quarterlies each month and then paying quarterly Yes. It, yes, exactly. Yeah, so it, it's accrued with every pay run that just, yeah, get, then gets distributed. Yep. Cool. Um, hmm. For sick days, um, oh, you're looking, yeah. everything is everything is set up. Um, I see that uh, Yvonne asked that. Everything is set up here. Um, what you'll see is you can actually create your policy based on employee. So if you have a, a certain employee that has you know, um, a fixed amount of um, fixed amount that then that's what they're going to get. They're going to get that many sick uh, sick time requirements. Um, 
we will let you know that there are some uh, sick time requirements in your state and city. Um, but if there's no uh, no uh, requirements in your state and city, you you know you can, of, of course, go above the go go wherever you you please. And then you guys. Uh, so next, I see Kimberly. Yep. Sorry, we do not have an app. Um, we have a mobile web experience. Um, we hope to have an app in the near future. Um, it's just uh, something we haven't built today. So, Robin, I see you asked about um, time tracking, and then and I think Catherine also asked about that too. Yeah, and so did uh, Lori a little bit farther down too. So lots of time oh, tracking. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, we do have a time tracking product, and it does come in at our uh, middle tier. This is going to be a time tracking product that is really great for employees that can get to a computer and clock in and out there. Um, we also work with a number of time tracking partners. I'll show you that over here. Uh, if you need a, more of a mobile solution that has an app and everything like that. Cool, so time, time tracking and then um, yeah, Yvonne had a follow up for the check printing. If there's an yeah, ability you, to reprint. You can always, yeah, you can always reprint the check because you're doing the printing at at your um, you know business location, organization location. Um, you can always reprint that, you know, and tear up the tear up the first one. Great question, Robin, about more than one employee bank account. Um, employee, I have yet to find the limit of how many bank accounts you can actually add. Um, so employees can. Uh, divvy up their their payment based on checking account, savings account, this account. Um, really, it's a, it's it's an unlimited number. So Nancy, we are a um, we are only focused on the U.S. Unfortunately, so we we will not uh, be able to serve uh, payroll in Canada. And. Fritzy, just to, to kind of go through the cost, I'll use the example of a, a five person organization. Um, for this first tier, what you would be looking at a month is $69 uh, with no extra, no, no fees outside of that. Um, there could might be sales tax depending on your location. Um, and that's gonna be the $39 base plus $6 per employee. So 69 altogether, and that's gonna include direct deposit, tax filing and remittance, all of that uh, stuff that I've mentioned on this on this demo and everything. Cool. Um, yeah, and Dave, we, we touched on that. Um, and Leslie, end of year taxes are included W4, uh, sorry, W2s, 940s, 1099s. We generate those forms into employees' accounts um, from the company reporting side, we will uh, fill and file those 940s too. So Yvonne, you'll be able to track their sick time um, the entire way through. Uh, you'll actually have that time off piece that actually shows, um, shows how much time everyone has taken. Um, you'll also be able to pull reports such as these that shows um, time off balances. And this, you will see if they've gone into the negative or not. So they enter their time with the time tracker. Um, there's a there's a small video we can play of it um, by just going here um, and clocking in and clocking out. So you'll you'll be able to clock in, put their time in, and everything like that. There's no additional charges for direct deposit, uh, Paul. And Gusto does work well with remote staff. Um, what we do is we take the business, uh, the, the organization's employees home location and match up their taxes based on that and the company's taxes by where they are actually uh, registered. To Kathy, W-2s are sent electronically um, and they are uh, put into the Gusto account uh, to be either printed and, and you know, filed uh, in a hard copy or filed digitally.
Um, is there, so the additional fee for the partners, there's no fee from Gusto to connect partners. Um, that is, you know, the partners we work with are just integrations. Uh, you'll, of course, pay for their services if they charge a price, but the connection between the two, we do not, we do not charge. Um, we partner with Clover uh, through their point of sale. Uh, that's a different type of partnership. For prices for contractors, hi, Debbie, great to, great to see you. Um, it's $6 per month, the months that you pay them. And that's uh, still per month, not per, per, per run or anything like that. And the months that you don't pay them, um, you'll not be, you will not be charged at $6. There are no additional charges for making direct deposits to additional accounts. There, I, I don't know of any discounted fees for working with the time clock apps, but we do have some that are free, such as um, home base. And yes, Yvonne, we, we will make sure um, that the that the W-2s are all correct and they can be reviewed. So going back to the agency payments, that'll be in the reports that they're made quarterly and what day they were paid for. Yes, if you run bi-monthly payroll to Fritzy, we only charge once per month. We do not charge per payroll run. So you can run one, two, five, 20 payrolls and you'll still be charged the same amount. We'll get to that on and the Apple charged. side, uh, but please don't run 20 payrolls in a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, so retirement plans are totally included um, in the core plan. It's that that's a separate kind of piece. We don't, you know, we, we, we work with a partner for 401k. If you're doing a 403b, you'll administer it um, through uh, whatever organization you're using um, and you can track it with Gusto. Um, there is no additional fee for the time tracking apps we partner with. For our time tracking app, it is included in our uh, complete plan, the one you see here in the middle, um, and that is an extra charge per person of $6 per month. So I see the question about um, withholding taxes uh, for your pastors as a courtesy. We are capable of doing that. Um, and my uh, sales and support team can help you set that up, um, you know, when you're when you're learning about the uh, product. And Yvonne, we we will if there is any errors, we work with you to fix we, we will work to correct it on our side and we do not charge a fee for that uh, W2 corrections. And yes, reimbursements are handled through the payroll run. Um, as we saw here, there's a field for um, there is a field for reimbursements that I'll show you. And those are handled right here. So there are for reimbursements. And then Fritzy, I'm glad I could make you laugh. <laughs> cool. Yep. It looks like, uh, Debbie would just like a follow up maybe on the uh, agency stuff. Uh, yep. So that's fine. Um, and, and again, we, we this um, I mean this format we've only got an hour or so. So if there's anything that needs to be followed up from both the Apples and the Gusto side, uh, Brandon and I are both happy to you know have any conversations afterwards and uh, follow up via email or whatever needs to be done. So uh, thanks for rolling with all those questions, Brandon. We got a few more, but what I, what I'd like to do now is just kind of pause and maybe move on to the Apples side, and then we totally. open up for some more questions on the towards the end of the day, so that way we can make sure that everybody kind of gets their opportunity there. Um, so yeah, if you, in your go to webinar thing, if you just want to change presenter back to me, then I'll take it from here. Yes. And just so you guys know the, um, let's see, show main screen, here we go. Okay. Uh, we, as a company, as Aplos, use Gusto for our payroll. So we've got, um, We've got close to 80 employees at this point, uh, have had a lot of growth, a lot of check versus direct deposit, a lot of different situations going on there. We use it for time tracking, so um, could not be bigger uh, fans or proponents of Gusto. So, yeah. Cool. Okay, so let us make a couple of assumptions. Let's say you guys all love today and love Applos, love Gusto, decide to move forward uh, and now get 
up and going with whatever plan, whatever pricing, whatever features you need. And now you're in there, your employees are set up, your company is set up, all the deductions, everything is now created in Gusto. Uh, and now you begin to run payroll. Now let's take a look at then what does that look like as far as an integration goes between running a payroll in Gusto and then what appears now on the Aplos side uh, for the accounting side of things. So I don't, uh, unfortunately, the demo account that we have for this wasn't quite working for me. So I, I won't be able to do a live demo, but I did take some screenshots from an account and blocked out anything that might be sensitive. But um, generally what's going to happen here is uh, in Aplos, when you get to the payroll screen, it's going to ask you to log into Gusto. So you would use your credentials. You would validate your you know, email and password with their side. That would then bring you to a screen that would allow you to do this global account mapping. Because what's what it's gonna do is whatever your breakdown is in Gusto, whatever you know benefits, deductions, exemptions, employees, whatever your scope is on the Gusto side, whenever you run payroll, Aplos is going to detect all of those categories and then bring those over into the Aplos side to this kind of global mapping account screen here. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring back everything that it detected from Gusto. So you can see here from this screenshot, we've got a couple of things here. We've got, first of all, a fund selection here. So you can kind of pick what fund in Aplos you're going to be using to pay people for their payroll, which we'll cover that in just a second. You're going to assign the salaries and wages categories. So for salary expense, what expense account do you want to use? For benefits, what uh, benefit expense and benefit liability do you want to hit as far as where is it accrued on your income statement for that benefit that you're providing, as well as where is the liability going to sit then for the payment out to the vendor later. The taxes portion is going to be for any of the employer uh, participating portion, so all the matching and everything. That's the expense account you're going to use to track that, and then so on and so forth. So again, anything that you set up, reimbursements, deductions, benefits, anything, uh, is all going to come into this global mapping screen where you tell it, when you see this from Gusto, do this in Aplos. So then what this allows us to do then is move on to this next screen, which is import the payroll runs from Gusto into this screen in Aplos. So you would do this. So it would basically go and retrieve all of the recent pay runs from Gusto, bring it to this screen here. It would list them all. Uh, you, you can also tell it up in the left-hand corner there that I want to retrieve pay runs on or after a certain date. So meaning if you're starting Gusto um, now, and but you kind of want to finish what you're doing in the other accounting system, so you want to start maybe in February, then you can tell it to just only focus on things that come in past that date. Um, or you can even go back. You can go back to 2019 and go retrieve all of those historical pay runs to then bring them over to Aplos. But keep in mind, whichever one you're importing here will impact your financials. You are creating an accounting entry from this payroll run. Um, up in the top right, there's this little drop down arrow. That's how you can go back to the global mapping. But let's just say we're going to import this first listing here for the pay period of 1227.19 through 110.20. So then I would click import. And then that would bring me to a screen here that says, here are the employees that are a part of this pay run. So whether you have one or a hundred, it's gonna list them all right here. It's gonna list their employee ID, their employee name, their payment method. So this would distinguish between check and direct deposit. It would show their gross pay, net pay. And then you'll see that it has a couple of things here. One says custom mappings, and then there's an edit mapping. So if you were to click on that blue kind of pencil icon, what that's gonna do is back here we assigned a global mapping, which means if you don't tell me otherwise, here is how I'm going to use uh, your chart of accounts in Aplos to then record salary expense, benefits, taxes, so on and so forth. What you're doing here is when you click edit mapping for an employee, you actually go to the same kind of mapping screen, but this is now for someone in particular. So let's say uh, Alex is a pastor or something, and I am going to get paid using a different series of expense accounts, um, liability accounts. You know, you want all that to kind of go somewhere different depending on who the employee is. This is where you can assign that. So you have your global mapping, which is kind of the default, and then you have employee based mapping, which then would override that. So each employee can go to a different fund, a different expense account, different liability accounts, whatever combination you need there. Now, let me address a couple of things here. Um, 
before we move any further, two kind of points of contention just coming from the support side. One is uh, a lot of people ask us, can you allocate amounts here and split? You know, let's say I wanted to split salary expense across two different expense accounts, uh, but I wanted to designate an amount that a certain amount goes to a fund or an account and a certain other amount goes somewhere different. The answer to that is no, and that's because uh, when we detect that coming over from Gusto, we don't really have a way of ensuring that that amount is going to be consistent every single time. So if you paid somebody $1,000 and said, I want 300 to go to this thing and 700 to that, and then next time you only paid them 800, then now we're trying to split three and 700 for 800. Does that make sense? So what we do is percentage based. So you would you would add this little black plus button here to add a split line, whether you want this person to be spread across multiple funds or different expense accounts or liability accounts. And then you would assign it a percentage so that we know that whenever we see blank amount coming over from said person, we split it you know, here, there, and the other place, depending on the percentage that you've assigned here. The other thing I wanted to just mention here is if you don't select anything here, then it will apply the global mapping. So for instance, if you wanted someone's salary and wages to use a different expense account, but for their benefits, you want that all to lump into the same liability as everyone else then you would leave the you know the benefits section blank and then just change salary expense or whatever's applicable for that specific employee All right so then you would do that per employee and again you don't have to this is just if people or different employees need a different breakdown uh, otherwise the global mapping will take care of all of it and once you've got that all mapped then you would go to this third step here uh, which is review the journal entry and import so this would show you kind of here's what to expect here is the the total net movement of money coming out for uh, for your actual paycheck, kind of the net salary that's being paid. Here's the net movement for reimbursements, uh, and then here's the net movement for taxes. So these three lines here should then correlate with your bank statement to show the amount of cash that's been withdrawn for this payroll run. And then down below is the actual then journal entry that would be posted. Again, I've blocked out all of the amounts here, but you can see that we're debiting all of the expense accounts here in the 5,000s, crediting the cash and any liabilities there, and then you would click import, which would then take you back to the payroll or import and exit payroll, which would just take you back to the main screen. So the benefit here is, as you can see, there are three steps. One is set up the global mapping. Two is, you know, pick or, well, I guess first step would be to pick the payroll that you want to import. Second would be just review, make sure that all the amounts and employees look right. Do any employee mappings that you need. Third step is to click a green button that says import, and then it's done. So once the, what this does is this will enter a journal entry into your journal entry screen in Applos to have the same kind of breakdown here from uh, the bottom section. That will update your expense accounts. It'll update your liability accounts, your cash accounts. It will post all of the accounting for you because you have now mapped everything to tell us how to do that. Uh, another real quick question that we get a lot is then what happens to check payments? If you're bringing it into one journal entry, and that one entry now has movements that are direct deposit as, as well as cash movements and you know check movements that then will clear at later times. How do you then reconcile that one journal entry? Well, uh, we created a kind of a special workaround for Gusto in that exact situation. Um, so what we do basically is even though in your register and on the journal entry screen, there is one transaction that assumes all of the payroll information here, when you go to do your bank reconciliation, we bring in all of those separate check uh, payments as different line items that then can be cleared later. So for instance, if you ran payroll uh, at the end of January and then one of the checks cleared in February, when you do the bank reconciliation for January, you can reconcile everything that applies and then that check would then just be left over to then clear in the February period or whenever that then happens. Uh, so before we move on to kind of the recap, are there any questions on the Aplos side? I'm sure there will be. Let me get to that. Uh, let's see. Follow up there. Conversation with the so time clock feature. So a couple more Gusto questions. Okay, so from Jennifer, we currently use accountants who are users on our Aplos account. Would this be work that they could do via Gusto through our Aplos account? Yeah, so uh, a couple of things. One is there is a pretty clear distinction between what we can help with and what Gusto can help with. So if there's anything that your accountants or different users need to do to impact um, 
kind of the payroll setup of things, you know, changing deductions or exemptions or company data, bank accounts, all of that would need to be handled on the Gusto side. So if you have a, a user that needs to make those changes, you would then have to give them access somehow to the Gusto side to, to do those changes. But on the Aplo side, um, as long as anybody has a, access to the accounting portion of the system and then has the ability to edit, so they, they're, they're not a read-only user, they have the ability to you know, post things and change things, then they should be able to uh, you know, impact the global mapping, the employee mapping, import payroll. Uh, it's not exclusive to administrators, just anybody with edit ability on the uh, accounting side. Uh, I've done two payrolls with Gusto and tried the global mapping, but ran into problems with the percentages. It stopped uh, from importing. I need help with this. Elizabeth, that is a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, let's follow up after this, and I can get you in touch with our support team who can run through some troubleshooting there with you. Uh, do you have to edit the fund percentage split for each payroll? Good question, Wendy. So she's asking, basically, if you were to do that per employee uh, or even global split. Uh, I want a, you know, a certain percentage to go to this account or this fund and another percentage to go to a different account or fund. Uh, that will stay there until you touch it. So if you always split 70-30 and then next payroll, you need to now go change that to 60-40. That is something that you would have to go in there, update the mapping, and then bring in the payroll entry. Uh, that's a really good question for people that have um, hourly employees that are maybe spending time working against certain funding sources. So, for instance, if you have a grant and you're, you know, the grant assumes a certain amount of payroll, and so you've got Alex that clocks 20 hours this pay period and 10 in, in the next uh, against the grant, then that would be something that you'd probably want to factor into the per employee mapping to make sure that you are kind of withdrawing from the same or from the right fund, if you will. Uh, same kind of question from Dave. Does the employee uh, mapping have to be done for every payroll or is it consistent month to month? Yeah. So, so long as the distribution of the employee's um, pay does not need to change, then the, imp the individual mapping will hold perpetually. So as long as the employee always needs to be split however you need, then you should never have to change it. Uh, let's see. So Yvonne, so I understood correctly that an employee is getting an employee reimbursement. It is stated correctly on their pay stub, and then we could choose the expense account when we import the payroll. Yes. So if those uh, reimbursements are set up, then that would come over as a separate, um, I can't remember if it lists, I, I forget what the section is that it lists it as, but reimbursements does come over as its own um, mapping line here. Let me get back uh, to the global mapping. So you see here how you've got benefits, taxes, salaries. There's another one at the bottom. I forget what it's called, but that is where reimbursements would be uh, chosen. And then you can pick whatever expense account you want that to hit. So if it's like housing allowance or something like that, you can uh, clearly kind of allocate that to whatever expense account that you need. Uh, and then from Morgan, a dual pay scale employee uh, can be mapped to different accounts. I'm not, uh, maybe give me a little bit more context on the dual pay scale, but for the most part, again, the in, the per employee mapping can be um, done so that if that person needs to hit multiple funds or multiple expense accounts, whatever their distribution needs to be, then you can save that there. Again, if if a person gets paid differently in different pay periods, then that is something that you would have to go in there and edit just to make sure that we are routing things where they need to go properly uh, on that particular pay run. And then uh, let's see, Yvonne, we have an employee that teaches but also manages the building, so she has two pay rates. Uh, we could then set that up on Gusto. Um, I guess that's maybe a question on the Gusto side. And two different pay rates for yeah, and that's and that's and that's multiple pay rates that I mentioned earlier. Uh, totally doable. Yeah, and that one uh, I I don't know any different uh, at this point. I I would assume that that would still. I mean, you run the payroll, and then it's gonna it's basically detecting on the gusto side salaries, benefits, taxes, whatever. So even if they had multiple rates, yep. it would still net to whatever their like salary cost and all that stuff is. So on the Aplo side, I'm not sure Correct. that there would be any special designation for that. Yeah, totally. Totally. Uh, that That's spot on. Um, and then a question from Wendy here. When you talk about reimbursements, you mean taxable reimbursements, correct? So this wouldn't be a place for reimbursement for sodas purchased, purchased for a meeting, correct? Um, Brandon, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe these reimbursements are uh, essentially untaxed, but correct me if I'm wrong. 
they're untaxed, correct. Mm -hmm. um, reimbursements um, by their very nature are typically untaxed. It's a business cost taken on by the employee. Um, so that, that would be um, untaxed. So yeah, you could put you know three fifty on there for somebody that bought a soda and uh, needed to be reimbursed. <laughs> cool. Again, there's a couple of follow up items which we'll go back to. Um, any other questions on the Atlas side before we uh, just kind of go back to a general Q and A? There's like four to one questions Gusto versus Atlas, so that's uh, that's good. <laughs> All right. All righty. Well. Um, so generally today, uh, what we covered here is we went through an overview of Gusto's payroll features and pricing, as well as a walkthrough on how to get started in Gusto for Apple's customers and showed how to use the payroll platform to do kind of the common payroll tasks. And that was all done via Brandon on the Gusto side. And then we walked through the Apple's integration for importing payroll journal entries and tracking things. And so right now we're kind of in the question phase. So are there any other questions that you'd like us to cover Again, there's a couple of follow-up items. More than happy to do some follow-up after this. Um, uh, yeah, any other questions? Here? So let's see, Lori. So we do uh, reimbursements, but they do into different. They go into different accounts. Will that be done when everything else is imported into Atlas? Yeah. So if you have, um, I'm. This is on the Gusto side. I'm not sure if you can set up multiple types of reimbursement. Um, if it's just one reimbursement field, then. Uh, we then would only, we're basically going to detect one for one. So if there are ways to detect, to set up multiple reimbursements or different types of things on the Gusto side, we would then bring those in as their own individual line item that then can be assigned to an expense account. But if you are using the same field to do housing allowance, you know, it's a thousand dollars for the pastor or something. And then the next pay period, you now up to that to $1,003.50 because they had reimbursements and the soda, then uh, that would still only have one expense account assigned to it. So that would be somewhere where you'd have to go into that mapping and just make sure that you are allocating things to properly capture what you need there. And then, on, yeah, that's a good question on the Gusto side, Brandon. Is there a way to set up um, different types of reimbursement? Yeah. So. Um... You know, when when I when I showed the walkthrough, I added a reincurring re a recurring reimbursement for um, housing allowance. You can set up multiple of those. You can also add reimbursements every payroll run, depending on you know if there were expenses uh, that needed to be reimbursed during that pay period. So there's a lot of flexibility on that, and whether it's a recurring reimbursement or a one-time reimbursement. Yeah, Yvonne, the employee that manages the building and is also a teacher. So that kind of back to that same, you know, two pay rates type of a thing. Uh, on the Aplo side, all we're going to detect is you're going to you're going to have two different rates in Gusto and pay her as a, as a teacher and as a building manager, hypothetically. That's all going to then net to here's kind of the gross salary. Here's the net pay. Here's the taxes deducted. Here's the benefits provided. You know, here's kind of the payroll summary. So then on the Aplos side, we only see salary, taxes, benefits. We won't necessarily know that it was one wage uh, version versus the other. So then if that person person's payroll, you know, depending on how much was allocated to either thing, needs to be split by account and or by fund, that would just be one of those per employee uh, breakdowns that you'd have to figure out. And then if that pay fluctuates per pay period, you know, this this pay period, she did more building management than teaching. But then in the next pay period, it's more teaching than building management. You would have to go into that mapping and update the percentages to make sure that that is reflected properly. Uh, we have been using Gusto, but not linked. Is there a way to do a test run to see how the mapping works out? Sure. There is no real binding nature to the partnership there. So um, you can log into Gusto. Uh, do all of the global mapping, and then even import a pay run, look at the journal entry and see how it works. Uh, if you don't like it, or if you, you know, um, if you do like it, but, you know, tested it on an old period or something, you can always delete the journal entry, delete the pay run, unlink the whole thing, and just go back to uh, w whatever way you're doing it currently. So nothing binding there, Morgan. Uh, will this webinar be archived for future review? Sure. Yeah, this webinar is being recorded. So what we'll do is uh, once we've got everything kind of polished up, we will host this up on YouTube. And then if you'd like the link, um, we will send it out to you. So uh, maybe just make a note. We'll uh, follow up here with you 
specifically here, Cynthia, and or anyone that wants the recording, just let us know and we'll be happy to send that out. Uh, as far as availability of that webinar, uh, that uh, I, I would assume, you know, maybe tomorrow, <laughs> it's usually a pretty quick turnaround. Um, just to be safe, I'd probably say by the end of the week, but that'll probably be a lot faster, Joseph. Looks like a number of people are interested in the link, so we'll we'll just plan to, uh, whether you want it or not, we'll send you the link <laughs> to the email that you <laughs> used to uh, to sign up for this webinar. So we've got it. Uh, and again, if you have any questions that are uh, a little bit more active, then Apple's support team is always around. We actually extended our hours during this holiday season and probably indefinitely to 6 a.m. Pacific to 6 p.m. Pacific, so 9 to 9 Eastern. Um, so if you have any questions, our support is free. And uh, all of our reps are happy to help with this. So, um, yeah. And they are the best. <laughs> we will. Yeah, we do our best. It, payroll is one of those, uh, like Brandon said. And by the way, I loved what Brandon said about we want, they want your payroll to be uh, non stressful and not a you know cluster of frustration that it could be. Um, we also want the same thing, not only from payroll, but then also same from the fund accounting nature. So I think both camps here are uh, mutually interested in basically alleviating you guys from having to do as much as work as possible because <laughs> you have stuff to do you have a mission you have a, a, a you have a, you have things that you need to do uh, so let us take kind of the stress and uh, and the complexity out of it so awesome and then uh setting up our gusto account yeah so dave needs some help setting up gusto yeah. sure thing dave i'll have i'll have someone reach out to you today uh appreciate it um and then for everyone else, um, you know, if you if you are interested in learning more about Gusto, um, you can go to Applis's website uh, to the partners page and uh, signing up through that link will uh, get you three months free if you decide to move forward. All right. One last question from Wendy here. Do you have any physical time clocks that integrate with Gusto? Um, not that I know of off the top of my head. Um, I will send you the list of time tracking partners um, and then I can I, I can do some digging on my side to see if any of them actually have physical time clocks. Um, I do have um, I do have one that comes with comes with mobile apps so that's kind of the kind of a work around on that. And then the timesheet is web-based, correct? Yeah, but both systems, Applos and Gusto, are, are both web-based. So um, I don't know that you guys have any offline uh, capabilities there, but yeah. Yeah. All right. The timesheet has the pay stub. Isn't the pay stub? I'm sorry? Cool. Uh, makes sense. All right. Well, uh, yeah, thank you guys for showing up today. I appreciate you taking the time and hopefully today was helpful. Uh, again, with this webinar was being recorded, so we will put this up on YouTube and send it to you all. And then in that email or that follow up, I'll also include my contact information as well as Brandon's and then the uh, websites for both Applos and Gusto. So if you have any questions, um, reach out to us and uh, we both have our teams that can help with support and, uh, you know, setup of everything. So uh, by default, if you need anything, just let us know, and we're more than happy to help with anything. So thanks for your time, and uh, we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you, everyone. Take care.